Aristotle's old saying portrays music as the direct image into one's sentiments and soul. Therefore, the kind of music you listen to shapes the kind of person you have turned out to be. That is to say, if one listens to the wrong kind of music, he will become the wrong kind of person. But conversely, if he listens to the right kind of music, he'll tend to become the right kind of person. Sounds have meaning. Sound is electromagnetic frequency resonance. If I play with those frequencies, I can target certain parts of the mind. If I want you to go to sleep, or if I want you to go into a meditative state, I can make my music do that. If I'm in a state of depression, then I'm in a frequency. Depression is frequency. Joy is frequency. Now that the topic of using music to delude people has come up, I must take you to how it's been commercialized to endlessly gratify the lust for money of the ones in power. Music has been turned into a product of capitalism, a cash cow to market, to feed propaganda, to manipulate, to make everyone think alike. Music can be significantly used to modify our emotions and moods. So much so that if one has the right knowledge, one can brainwash masses with only one weapon, music. Music is hypnotic. A good example would be using patriotic music to drive people into violence. People have been studying this since the 1960s, but lots of people are completely oblivious that sound is used as a hypnotic form of trickery. You are most likely ignorant of how companies and marketers exploit the use of music to sell their products. As psychologist Annette Shermer had reported at the Society for Neurosciences Assembly in New Orleans, rhythmic sounds not only coordinates the behavior of people in a group, it also coordinates their thinking. The mental processes of individuals in the group become synchronized. The discovery broadens the prevailing theory that declares that music has the potential of tapping into those little circuits in your brain, of the sensory cognition, to dominate over your emotions, thoughts, and movements. A futuristic and fictional depiction of mind and behavior manipulation by rhythms, managed by radio and penalty shocks, have been beautifully written by Kurt Vonnegut in his petrifying sci-fi novel, The Sirens of Titan, which was originally published in 1959. The author makes use of nonsense rhythm to manipulate the minds of the people. These half-witted, pulsating, and metrics words were, and I quote, rented a tent, a tent, a tent. So as you can observe, the rhythm itself is used to mold and boost the desired actions and behavior from the objects of brainwashing in the novel. You might be intrigued about the mysteries of Stonehenge. While some people often conclude that it's possibly giants or might as well be aliens, some archaeologists have suggested that Stonehenge is simulated by illusions of sound. This magnificent and curious hypothesis proposes the monument of Stonehenge, located in southern England, was perhaps constructed to imitate an impression of sound. The famous Piper illusion is that when two pipers are playing in a field, a peculiar effect can be observed, according to an analyst who practices the properties of sound at the USA's Rock Art Acoustics. He further states that at some points, one can observe that sound waves resonating from the two pipers cancel out one another, thus emerging areas where the sound is diminished. In support of the theory, Waller pointed to myths linking Stonehenge with music, such as the traditional nickname for the stone circles in Great Britain, Piper Stones. One legend holds that Stonehenge was created when two magic pipers led maidens into the field to dance and then turned them into stone. Now since we have already been taking the journey backwards, why not talk a little about Pythagoras? We are familiar with his contribution to mathematics, but today let's address the offering into the musical sciences, the method of musical tuning, which is the use of altering the pitch of the origin of the sound. For instance, a string of an instrument or an individual's voice to attain the coveted pitch compared to a different source of the sound in which 3-2 is used as the interval ratio is called Pythagorean tuning, named after the Greek philosopher Pythagoras. To quote the renowned author, poet, philosopher, and mystic George Philip Friedrich Freyer von Hardenberg, who goes by the pen name Novelli, the musical proportion seems to me to be particularly correct 
natural proportions. Otherwise, it can also be explained as tuning of the symptonic temperament in which the generator is the ratio 3-2. It has been passed down over the generations that Pythagoras discovered the fundamentals of this musical tuning by observing dissonance and consonance which was radiating from the sounds produced by the hammers of four blacksmiths. Pythagoras rushed into the blacksmith's shop to discover why and found that the explanation was in the weight ratios. Ancient sources claim that Pythagoras had a former knack in ratio and harmony. It would be insufficient to close the discussion of Pythagoras without his witty remark, there's geometry in the humming of the strings. To venture into the much technical areas of music, let us indulge into the different keys, modes, what they signify and stand for as a whole. And what is a better time than now to introduce the musical scale of seven tones, dawned from an emerging pattern of entire three-tone pitches, a half-step, another two entire tones, and a closing semitone, the contemporary Lydian mode. This major key, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, is known for being rapid, wild, zestful and flustering and is often correlated with daybreak and the mystical energy of Mars. But the mode used more commonly than the Lydian mode is the Ionian mode. This primary key, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, has qualities of euphony, encouraging friendship and vigor, referring to the daytime and the mythical and phenomenal energy of the sun. The Mixlodian or the Dionysus mode, G-A-D-C-D-E-F-G, was acknowledged for instigating euphoria, frequently related to the symbolic energy of Jupiter. Similarly, there are other modes like the Dorian mode, magical and symbolic energy of Saturn, the Phygean modes, Venus symbolism, and the Locrian mode, mystical symbolism of Mercury and twilight. The most exciting thing about music is how it can be used as a form of communication like opera singers do. To conclude, I shall share a disturbing portion of an article which states, If the text is not to be heard and nourished alongside the sound it makes, then, in the words of the five-year-old I was 50 years ago, I might as well ask today's young composers and singers, why sing? If you liked the video, a sub to the channel would be incredible, and also share the video to spread the word. You can watch another video just click left or right. Keep inspiring.